Hi everybody, welcome back. Over the last few days I've been following a theme over on my other channel and the theme is all about fairness and made-up stories for popularity etc. I actually told an African folktale over on my other channel of which the lesson culminated into believe only in what you can see and that is why I want to talk about two crimes which are currently in the news and the courts. I've spoken about the Coburger Idaho 4 case before and therefore I'm going to leave it till last. A case I have not commented on much and not spoken about before is the Delphi case. Now don't ask me why because I don't know. I've been following the case for years now but something have always felt off about the case. A dynamic in the relationships between the two girls, between the family members, in the community, in law enforcement. Just everything surrounding this case sounded like a piece of badly written horror fiction. And therefore, I preferred to keep my mouth shut and wait it out, at least until I have made some sense out of it. Unfortunately, it appears the day when any of this will resemble real life instead of a badly written horror fiction will never come and is instead just venturing deeper into the realm of batshit crazy. My other issue is that Unlike with many other cases where I can somehow or where I'm somehow managed to draw a line and say that I'm 90 to 99 percent sure this is what happened and or that is what happened, the Delphi case and the Moscow Idaho cases are two where I have a huge divide between what I intellectually think and what my heart and subconscious make me feel. In other words, my instinct is opposing my intellect and I don't know which one is right. In the Delphi case, particularly after recent developments, my intellect tells me that Richard Allen may very well be the fall guy that he may very well be innocent but my instinct tells me it is not the case. Somewhere in my subconscious something is telling me Richard Allen did it. There is something nagging at me, a fleeting thought I just cannot grab hold of long enough to make sense of but something buried in the recesses of my brain is telling me Richard Allen killed Abigail Williams and Liberty German. In the Coburger case, it is the exact opposite. My intellect tells me he likely did it, but my instinct tells me that he did not kill those poor young people and somehow I feel that maybe he accidentally got involved, if involved at all. Ask me why I feel the way I do in these two cases, and I cannot tell you. Listening to other creators, it is however very clear to me that I'm not the only person acting and feeling this way, and therefore, for that very, very reason, because we are so confused, because we have mixed feelings, the process in these two cases should have been 100% above reproach and 100% transparent. Both these cases have attracted international attention and both these cases took place in counties where the conduct of their local law enforcement was already in question before the murders took place. Again, because of that, every T should have been crossed 
every I dotted and every action according to the book and transparent. But alas, unfortunately, it is not. Now, regardless of why I feel Richard Allen is guilty, there is a process of law which has to take place. There are rules and laws for members of law enforcement, for lawyers and for judges. None of them, including the judge, are judge, jury and executioner. And whether you are the suspect or not, those judicial rules apply to you as well. And one of those rules or laws are actually mentioned in the United States Constitution. The Sixth Amendment specifically states that people deserve to have the assistance of counsel for their defense. That means that even if someone cannot afford legal representation, an attorney will be provided for him and paid for by the government. However, a defendant is given a choice of representation and he can waive his right to that representation and represent himself. Added to that, though, is the fact that if a defendant chooses legal representation, he is entitled to effective counsel. Lawyers who do not do their jobs and fight for their client is considered negligent. If a defendant can show that the attorney did not investigate the crime, do the legwork to find witnesses, address and file the paperwork needed and represent the defendant in court, then they can get a new trial and be retried. In Richard Allen's case, the actual trial has not started yet. As a matter of fact, his trial originally had been set for January 2024, but now the trial had been put off for another 10 months. And why? Allegedly, a friend, ex-employee of one of Richard Allen's attorneys, leaked some of the evidence. According to reports and copies of email, Richard Allen's one defense attorney, Andy Baldwin, informed Judge Gohl on October the 10th that a former employee had gone into his office sometime in August and taken pictures of sensitive crime scene evidence and then forwarded it to a Fisher's man who worked at the Ford Wayne Air Force Base. And this individual then spread it further to online groups and content creators. This Fisher's man then later committed suicide. On October 19th, Judge Gohl announced that Andrew Baldwin had orally withdrawn from the case and that attorney Rossi will be withdrawing in days. However, Judge Gohl then went right ahead and appointed a new defense team for Richard Allen. Now, I'm no lawyer and definitely am less familiar with United States law, but my common sense tells me you don't go and appoint a new defense team unless or until the previous team had completely and officially withdrawn. In this case, and in the judge's own words, Rossi has not withdrawn yet, and thus she had no right to appoint a new defense. To make matters even worse, both Baldwin and Rossi claimed they were coerced by the judge. But wait, even after Baldwin and Rossi offered to represent Richard Allen pro bono as his private counsel, and Richard Allen wrote a letter stating that he wished Baldwin and Rossi to remain as counsel, the judge refused and disqualified both 
Baldwin and Rossi from the case. Brad Rossi then hit back with a motion to remove Judge Goal from the case. Judge Goal, however, once again played judge, jury and executioner and struck the motion from the record. Like the attorney told Richard Allen's wife, this is not over yet. And now the matter is going to the Indiana Supreme Court. She already, I mean Judge Goal, had a slight setback when the Indiana Attorney General's office declined to represent Judge Goal. So she had to find her own attorney to represent her. The issue, however, behind all of this is that there is a 50-year-old man sitting in jail whose lawyers have to date created more than enough doubt in law enforcement and the case for us to say that there is more than reasonable doubt as to whether Richard Allen really committed the crime. Rossi and Baldwin certainly and without a doubt did what was expected of them and more. Secondly, had Baldwin not been honest and reported that the leak came from his office, would the court even have known about it? Or how far into the case would the judge have found out about it? And just how constitutional is it for Richard Allen not to have a say as to who he chooses to represent him. And let's imagine for a moment that Richard Allen is not guilty. How fair would it be to keep him in prison for another year before he is judged and found either guilty or not guilty? The other thing is we saw Richard Allen losing weight and looking rather unhealthy and a very sad specimen since he went to jail. Now, I have a feeling more than an opinion about that, but we can talk about that in another video. But what if Richard Allen's health deteriorates further to the point that he actually dies before October 2024. What recourse will his family have if he dies before he can go to trial? Is Judge Goal prepared to take that chance? With Richard Allen's letter asking to be represented by Rossi and Baldwin, the responsibility shifted from Judge Goal to the defendant, with the fact that Rossi and Baldwin offered private counsel. It also removes some of the responsibility from the state. So, in my opinion, the judge is rather scaly here and appears to have an ulterior motive for disqualifying Baldwin and Rossi. She also appears to take this very, very personally. And my question is why? She has a job to do and personal alliances and vendettas between lawyers and judges and prosecutors and god learners who should not come near a court, let alone in a case like this. Judge Gull got an extension of five work days to present her case in the Supreme Court. I sincerely hope that she will be removed and that the case will be brought forward, even if not to January when it was supposed to be, but then at least as soon as possible thereafter. In my opinion, two wrongs do not make a right. So even if Richard Allen is guilty of killing these two girls, it is not fair that the case be delayed again and for so long. It is not fair to Abby and Libby's families. It is not fair to Richard Allen's family. And it is not fair 
to the people of the area because if Richard Allen is not guilty, it means the perpetrator or perpetrators are still out there. Okay, guys, so I ran out of time. So I'm going to come back with a part two on the Coburger case, but with the same theme as soon as possible. So until then, please take good care of yourselves and each other. Bye.